Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Nisgoda. Welcome to another edition of the Wound Care Window. I'm your humble host and wound care correspondent reporting from AZH Wound Centers in Milwaukee. I wanted to continue our explanation of the debridement of eschars. We've showed you uh, several types of eschar debridement, the indications for those. I wanted to illustrate a follow-up and a sequential debridement that was started earlier. I'm going to show you some photos. This is how this patient presented a few weeks ago. And uh, as you'll notice, the heel eschar was intact, no evidence of erythema, purulence, fluctuance, and we maintained this as a dry eschar for uh, quite a while. When the eschar demonstrated that it was starting to separate, I began serial debridements, lifting the margins and slowly removing the eschar from the margins, allowing healing to take place from the margins towards the center. She uh, returns today, again, doing very, very well after having arterial revascularization, which was really the key to the success here. Uh, she did have some hyperbaric therapy, which also helped. However, what you see is that we are progressing in our separation of the eschar. If you notice the margins here, you can see that I have previously debrided the margins and lifted. And what you're noticing along all those margins is that she is granulated and actually shows signs of epithelization uh, moving towards the center of the wound. The eschar is loose now, as you can see, and we need to continue our debridement. And what I'm going to see today is can we get this whole eschar off? So I'm going to go ahead and pick up a margin, and you see it's very loose. And we're going to start our debridement and our dissection. And we'll see if we can get this thing off for us here. You'll see that the tissue is uh, very soft and uh, easily is debrided. She was very tender at one point, and we had to go slow with our debridements. Now uh, there's very little pain associated with this. Once again, I am in that plane of tissues between the viable and the non-viable. I am not going into the viable tissue here, I want to just get a separation of the necrotic tissue by debriding and lifting that. You see here we get some bleeding. You can see the tissue underneath is very viable. Don't want to get into a lot of bleeding, so I'm going to stay above that plane of tissue. When you're debriding like this, it's really important to position the patient so the patient is comfortable, but it's also important to be in a position of comfort for the person doing the debridement. You want to be in control, um, so you need to be comfortable, be able to visualize the area of debridement well. You're taking the tissue you want to take and not more. We'll continue our dissection and debridement. See this eschar is almost completely mobilized here. And again, the plain tissue I'm in is that margin of tissue between the non-viable and the underlying viable tissue. And you'll see that this has now been completely mobilized. Once again, we have that leathery external appearance. The underlying tissue is necrotic. You see some uh, liquefaction necrosis there. Uh, and we uh, recognize this is a uh, a medium for bacterial growth, placing a patient like this at risk for infection, and that's why when they start to separate, we want to get rid of this uh, tissue. So let's get rid of it. As I mentioned in prior videos, this will require serial debridement. I do not feel bone, which is good. It's all covered. Uh, this tissue here is reasonably viable. We're going to let this tissue declare itself uh, over time. But what we now have is an ulcer that uh, is clean, from an external uh, appearance standpoint, the base obviously does need some additional work down the road, but what we're going to do is uh, place a topical over this. The topical will be able to interface with the entire wound base to allow for granulation to occur with hopeful eventual complete closure uh, with epithelialization. Obviously, we're going to watch very closely. The calcaneus is right underneath this tissue here. If that were to become exposed, that would obviously place her at risk for osteomyelitis. I see no evidence that at this point recent x-rays were negative. However, we'll be very careful to watch that. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, follow-on 
in our instruction on debridement of eschars and this illustration of a complete removal of an eschar with serial debridements. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the Wound Care Window. Mm -hmm.